your courage and ability as you face the greatest athletes of the world. I marched with Jesse into that arena. And so did I. Two former Olympic teammates of yours, Jesse, both at that time co-holders with you of the 100-yard dash world record. From Chicago, Illinois, Ralph Metcalf, and from Los Angeles, Frank Wyckoff. All three of you, along with Foy Draper, who was killed during the war, were on the 400-meter relay team. Weren't you, Ralph Metcalf? Yes, and we were very proud to have been able to set a new world's record of 39 and 18 seconds in that event. And it was Jesse who was the leadoff man and passed the baton to me. Now next, Boyd Raper, and then you, Frank Wyckoff, carried that baton over the finish line. There was a great deal of uh, tension when Jesse Owens was called for the finals of the running broad jump, wasn't there, Frank? There was indeed, Ralph. Jesse, he had, had a, a big formidable, he had a formidable contender there from Germany, Lutz Long, who went out and on his third try made a leap of 25 feet 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. And then came Jesse's last jump, and with a look of determination on his face, you sprinted down that runway, Jesse, leaped high in the air, and landed into the pit. And when the mark was measured, and later as it was announced over the public address system throughout that entire arena, they announced that Jesse Owens had won the running broad jump. With a leap of 26 feet, 5 eighths inches, the first 26-foot running broad jump in the history of the modern Olympic Games. And, and then, Jesse, you went on and won two more gold medals, winning the 100 meters and then turning around and winning the 200 meters. A great feat. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Frank Wyckoff and Ralph Metcalf. <laughs> On your return to the United States, Jesse, you're given a hero's welcome, and the ticker tape that floats through the air in the canyons of New York City is said to equal that accorded Charles Lindbergh. In 1937, you return to Ohio State. Shortly afterward, begin a series of appearances. With whom, Jesse? Well, I was with uh, Bill Robinson. Yes. Bo Jangles Robinson, and I might say that Bill was uh, a great guy. He was just a tremendous guy, and we went together throughout the country, and, and you know, I'll tell you, when he passed away, I, I lost a real friend. I, I want you to say, I want to know that, and, and he taught me many things in reference to the entertainment world. The fleet-footed athlete becomes a nimble dancer. You lead a swing orchestra, make a motion picture here in Hollywood, and with the money earned doing all these things, you buy your parents a new 15-room house in Cleveland. Then Jesse went into the dry cleaning business and lost everything. The voice of your childhood sweetheart, Jesse. You met her when you were in junior high school. You were married in 1931. Your wife, Ruth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but even in the face of that uh, financial disaster, uh, you don't hold a guy like Jesse down, do you, Ruth? No, you don't. He went to work at the civilian defense program and then later joined the Illinois Athletic Commission as secretary. But in 1955, you resigned that post to do what, Jesse? I went to work for our youth commission at that time. Mm -hmm. um, we have quite a commission, and we have studied your commission out here mm -hmm. and the commission in New York. This was a goodwill uh, tour of India for the State Department. Well, first of all, I might say that first we went on the goodwill tour of, 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 uh, of the Far East. We visit India, Malaya, and yes. the Philippine Islands. Uh, Ruth, what did this entail? You've heard Jesse speak of it. Well, it entailed a training of Indian athletes, speaking at schools all over India, charming the people. Yes. And there was a commercial firm there that gave Jesse $1,000 for the use of his name. And he, in turn, turned it over to the Athletic Department of India to be used for worthy Indian athletes. For the past eight years, Jesse, you've been doing public relations work for Leader Cleaner in Chicago. You've reached a new pinnacle in your life now, Jesse Owens, higher perhaps than even four gold medals at the 1936 Olympics. Higher even than the three world marks broken and won tied at Ann Arbor in 1935. Today you're dealing with records that don't appear in the annals of the Olympics or the AAU. These are the records of boys off to a false start whom you've gotten back on the track in your capacity as sports specialist for the Illinois Youth Commission that you were talking about. Now in just a moment, Jesse Owens, we'll meet one of the youngsters 
uh, whom you've helped. It's your belief, Jesse Owens, that a boy interested in sports is a boy who won't get into trouble, right? That's very true. Well, recently, you established a program of sports clinics in Illinois, where top-name athletes give instruction to groups of boys. And your junior sports jamboree at junior-size Olympic Games has attracted each year over 1,800 youngsters. I guess that I could have been one of the juvenile delinquents that you read about in the papers if it hadn't been for Jesse Owens. The voice of a young man whom you've helped, Jesse. From Chicago, here's John Hickman. Oh, yeah. Hey, John, tell us how uh, Jesse changed your life. Well, I came from a broken home, and as a youngster, I had few opportunities to find the guidance that would mold me into a useful citizen. And I first met you, Mr. Owens, at the Southside Boys Club, That's right. where you gave me a job and helped to build my character by teaching me good sportsmanship and fair play. But Jesse didn't stop there, did he, John? No, sir, he did not. He was uh, instrumental in securing a position for me at Contractors Furniture and Carpet Company in Chicago, where I started as a sample boy and worked myself up to a, an executive position there, uh, controlling the carpet schedule installation. And Mr. Owens, I just want you to know you've been a help to hundreds and hundreds of boys, and on behalf of all of them, I just say thanks. Thank you. This guy's making more money than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John Hickman. Right after the show, Jesse, there'll be a party in your honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, where accommodations have been provided for your friends and family. Actually, your family consists of yourself and Ruth and your three daughters. Marlene, who is going to your alma mater, Ohio State. Gloria, Mrs. Malcolm Hemphill, who is teaching in Chicago. Beverly, Mrs. Donald Fraser with the Southside Bank in Chicago, and your granddaughter, Donna Fraser. <laughs> Pick her up and put her right on your lap over there if you want, Jesse. These right. gold cufflinks for you and this gold charm bracelet for Ruth are provided as mementos of this night by Marshall Jewelers at Fifth Avenue, New York. Also, we want you to have the 16-millimeter electric eye movie camera and the 16-millimeter sound projector, both furnished by uh, Bell and & Howell. And uh, we have for you, too, a film of tonight's program. Now, you have a daily early morning radio show on WAAF Chicago. And to help you record uh, some of the material that you use on this show, RCA Sales Corporation would like to provide you with this RCA portable tape recorder with speaker. And for your home, RCA Victor would like to provide you with this Kenbridge Color Television with wireless wizard electronic remote control, hand tuner with non-breakable impact case, all from RCA Sales Corporation. May 25th of this year will be the 25th anniversary of your record-breaking feat at Ann Arbor, Michigan, Jesse. On that day, a banquet is being held in your honor in Chicago, and an announcement will be made of the Jesse Owens Foundation, an organization which will provide college scholarships to any worthy male or female track athlete. Now, to help get the Jesse Owens Foundation off to a good start, uh, we'd like to present you with this check for $1,000. Now, Bob Richards, come on up here, pal. <laughs> now, what do you have to say about Jesse Owens here, Bob? Well, Jesse, as you have often said, if when a man achieves success, he can't reach back and lend a helping hand to someone less fortunate than he is, then all his own success is in vain. Jesse, you've reached back many times, and thanks to you, many a boy is made a better man. This is your life, Jesse Owens. Thank you, good night, and God bless you. <laughs>